Chapter 17, The Tree Lords Fonts was sitting quietly in the solarium with the Odd Sisters. She was keeping herself occupied by looking at the solstice tree, its silver and gold ornaments glittering by the candlelight. When a dreadful feeling came over her, she sat very still, her ears perked up as she felt a terrible tremor. Something large was approaching Morningstar Castle. As it drew closer, the decorations on the trees started to shake violently, falling from the branches and shattering into splinters all around Flans. She bolted away from the tree and let out a loud screech to get someone's attention. She rarely used her voice, and it sounded strange to her. She decided to call Nanny telepathically, but before she could, the solarium doors burst open, revealing a worried-looking Nanny and Tulip. What is it? What's happening? Flans asked, looking more frightened than Nanny had ever seen her. We don't know. We thought the Odd Sisters had woken up, and that's why you were howling, Nanny cried. She looked around the room, frantically trying to find the cause of the shaking. The room grew dim, and then everything went black. Stop! Nanny raised her hands skyward, creating a brilliant silver light. In its glow, they could see the source of the vibrations. Massive trees had surrounded the solarium. Trees larger than any others. Trees thought to have been extinct. Trees that had ruled the kingdom in the time before men or women. Nanny knew at once why they were there. Tulip looked up at the trees in shock. She had dreamed of the creatures as she'd read their history, but she never thought she would ever see them in real life. They won't hurt us. That's not their way, Tulip screamed. She was afraid Nanny would harm them with her magic. Before Nanny could answer, they came, there came a rapid knock from the front door of the castle. Nanny and Flans turned their attention in that direction as Tulip dashed out of the room to see who was there. When Hudson opened the door, Prince Popinjay ran into the castle, looking rather pleased with himself. Tulip, the tree lords, they're here! Oh, yeah. Tulip laughed. Yes, my love, I know. But what are you doing here? She brushed the leaves and twigs from his velvet jacket, straightening the ribbons at his sleeves. I had to follow them when I saw that they were headed to the castle, my love. But they assured me they mean no harm. Mean you no harm. The leader, Oberon, he wants to speak with you, Papa Jay said. Tulip blinked a few times. She was dumbfounded. With me? But why? I don't know, my darling. You'd best ask them yourself. I suppose I'd better go out and meet him then, Tulip said. Now, darling, I know you don't fear Oberon, but please be wary. Nanny said, don't agree to anything. Don't make promises that you are not within your power to keep. And whatever you do, please warn them that Maleficent is on her way and will not hesitate to use fire to protect herself. Tulip nodded, taking in everything Nanny was saying with grave importance. Of course. Choose your words wisely, my dear. As you've read, the tree lords speak very straightforwardly. There is never room for interpretation, and you should use similar language. Always speak as directly as possible. Your words matter now more than ever. Misinterpretation could be disastrous. Now go, speak to the king of the fairies.